Hi there, I'm Mr. Manoj. I'm discussing a few IGCSC chemistry exam questions with particularly with reference to what is called as mole concept or stoichiometry. Uh, these are usually calculation questions which could be worth from 5 marks to 8 marks. I'm trying to solve a few questions for you so that you could probably pick up some hints and um, then you could build up confidence in doing some more questions on your own. To begin with, uh, let's have a look at the question asked in 2009 uh, in May series, paper 32, question number 9. So why don't you grab your question papers and the rough sheets calculators and uh, uh, we'll go from there. Now that's the question what was asked. It, the, the question talks about a compound where the information was given with respect to magnesium 72% and there was information about nitrogen 28%. And you have to find what is called as the empirical formula. Now you must remember empirical formula means the simplest ratio of combination. And how you find empirical formula of compounds when this kind of information is given is, for example, you start with magnesium. The information given is 72%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by its respective atomic mass of magnesium, uh, which is 24 and then also we need to work with nitrogen whose information is 28 percent so i'm going to take that and divide by its respective atomic mass which is 14 and if you work that out please uh, you will find for magnesium you get three and for nitrogen you get two now this as of now is already in whole numbers which means this is your actual ratio this reflects that magnesium there are three moles of magnesium and for every two moles of nitrogen so that is why the empirical formula of this compound becomes mg3 n2 and that's how you solve this question looking at part b of the question these kind of questions are becoming very, very popular in the examination these days. And now you have, they give you a compound, it says the compound contains aluminium and carbon. So you don't know the formula of um, this compound. And you should not work with the valency and try to figure out the formula of the compound because the examiner has given you moles, uh, which means you really have to use this somewhere in your calculation and justify how you got the answer. You just can't work with the mole ratio. So what we do is, uh, since I don't know the formula of aluminium and carbon together, so at least I'm going to write this as ALC because I really don't know how the formula is going to look like. Um, and it says, it says it's, it's reacting with excess amount of water. So I'm going to react this with H2O. And uh, the question says what you get is aluminium hydroxide. So that's aluminium hydroxide there plus I will get methane. Now, since the question has given us the information about the moles of few things, they said the moles of um, the compound containing aluminum and carbon is 0 0.03. So I'm going to put that here, so 0 0.03. No information about H2O and actually not required because they clearly said it's excess. So we have to ignore that. Uh, aluminum hydroxide, I have 0 0.12 and methane i have 0 0.09 now if you look at the question above what we did here we, we were trying to convert this into some kind of a simple ratio and the same thought is for this kind of question so what we do we need to simplify these three numbers i try to make them into simple ratio out of these three if you notice this is the one which is the smallest one so we'll divide all of them by the smallest number so i'm going to get divide all of them by smallest number and see what numbers do we get. So I'm going to get here one and I will get here four and three. Now what that means is this compound, there is only one mole of it. So that one actually comes in here. This four means this compound, there are four moles of it. And the three here means methane, there are three moles of it. Now, once your mole ratios are fixed, you're not allowed to change these numbers. So now, all you have to do is to figure out how to balance this equation there, uh, particularly with respect to H2O, without disturbing these numbers. Now, I clearly see there are, there are um, four aluminium there. Now, 
The thing is, I can't change that number now because that is fixed already. So, but how do I make it four? And that is how we 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 understand that I need to put a four underneath there. And I see there are three moles of carbon. And once again, since I can't change that, we we'll need to put that three here. And that's how we come to know it as Al4C3. And you must also keep in mind the valency of aluminium is three, the valency of carbon is four. You could always verify using that. Now comes hydrogen. Now you look at this one. If you have three times four, remember it's three times four. You just multiply them together. That's 12 hydrogens on your, uh, on, on methane. And then there's another 12 hydrogens here. 4 times 3, that's 12 and 12, 24 hydrogen. And the only way you can make this 24 hydrogen is you could just look at that thing, 2. It means you need to divide 24 by 2. That's how you get 12. Once again, you can confirm 12 times 2 is 24 and you got 24 hydrogen here. If you check your oxygen, it's 12 oxygen here. And if you look at that oxygen there, this OH3, it means there are three oxygen there and you times it by four here. So that's how oxygen is 12 on both sides. Usually, if you balance your hydrogen, your oxygen would be balanced by itself. So this kind of working was required to solve this question. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the C part. When there's an equation given between silicon and fluorine and uh, the question is asking you to find out who's the limiting region. Now, don't forget the limiting region is the one who's less in quantity. And that's the one who controls the reaction. Now, what do we do is we basically uh, we write both the elements or compounds, whatever the question gives you, in some kind of a format which helps you to figure out the ratio. So, according to my equation, I see, and there's nothing here, it means there is one. So, I see one mole of silicon is reacting with two moles of fluorine. So, that's information I get from there. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to write down the moles of silicon underneath here. So that's 0 0.08. And if I look at the um, information here, I have mass of fluorine given. So I need to change that into moles, but we are all talking with respect to moles. So the formula to find moles is N equals to M by MR. And that's because fluorine is a molecule here. So I have to use MR. So the mass is 7.2. The, the molecular mass of fluorine, that's because there are two fluorine atoms, that's 19 times 2. And that's how I get um, 0 0.189. So I have now the moles of silicon and moles of fluorine. And I need to find out which one is less in, in true sense, which controls the whole reaction. The problem is, if you look at this, these two numbers, this ratio is not same. It's one ratio to two, and that's why I can't take a decision. I need to make this ratio same. So I'm going to divide this by two. And when I do that, this becomes equal to one. So now my ratio becomes same. But then to be fair, I also need to divide this by two. And when I do that, I get 0 0.0945. Okay, so all I have to do now is to compare this number and this number. So which one do you think is less, uh, 0 0.08 or 0 0.09? Obviously 0 0.08 is less. So that's why, uh, as I say clearly, this is a number which is less compared to that one. That's the one who's in excess. That's more than what is required. So basically silicon is the limiting region. So how you write is um, silicon is the, is the limiting reagent, limiting region since since point zero uh, point zero eight silicon uh, um, needs needs point zero eight of fluorine because it's supposed to be one ratio ones so all it needs uh, from fluorine is just point zero eight but if you notice carefully the amount of fluorine which is present is um, is 0 0.09, which is clearly more than 0 0.08. And that's why silicon becomes a limiting region. So that's basically how you do these questions. So I'll give you a minute and we are, we are going to go now to the November 2009 examination paper 32. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the next question. This is from paper 32. In 2009 November examination series. This is question number six. 
So if we just um, have a look at the question, this is on uh, this is on page number eleven. There you go. That's page number eleven there, and you'll find this question C part. And this question it talks about um, a reaction between iron two sulfate. Uh, reaction between um, giving iron two sulfate giving off iron three oxide plus SO two plus SO three. Uh, okay, a couple of things to begin with. This is the mass of the iron anhydrous iron two sulfate given. Don't forget anhydrous basically means something which doesn't have the point H two O. Um, the ones which have the point H two O are called hydrated. And whenever they say mass of one mole of FeSO four is one fifty two, please understand that means that's the MR there. But of course, if they had not given you that, you could have always found this from the periodic table. Okay, the first question talks about how would you find the moles of FeSO4. It's always a good idea to, to number these questions so that, uh, especially when you do the working in the exams, uh, especially in the rough sheets or here, the examiner should get a clear picture of uh, which part of your rough working is for which question. Now, to find the moles of FeSO4, because I have been given clearly the mass of FeSO4, that's 12.16. So, what I'm going to do is use the formula N equals to M by MR. So, I have the mass which is 12.16 and I divide this by the MR which is 152 and that's how I get uh, 0.08. Uh, of course, you must take care, you should not write in this part of the question paper. Next, to find the moles of Fe2O3, now what you have to do is, you have to understand how to work with the mole ratio. So, I'm just going to uh, take some paper here. Okay, so how to work with the mole ratio. So, if you look at the equation, the ratio between FeSO4 and Fe2O3, clearly it's 2 ratio 1. So, how we work this one is, I have I have here F E S O four ratio F E two O three. So I'm, this is my second part of the question. So the ratio between them is two ratio one, and that's coming from the equation which I see here. That's two and that's one. And I only have the moles of F E S O four as 0 0.08. So I have the moles of F E S O four as 0 0.08. So all I need to do is to find the moles of this. So a simple cross multiplication can solve the problem. So to find the value of x, I just have to do x equals to 0 0.08 divided by 2 and that's basically 0 0.04. And that's my answer there. And uh, that's the answer which I'm going to write here, 0 0.04. But then don't forget, you need to show the working at the side or at the blank page behind to justify your answer. Then the question talks about find the mass of one mole of Fe2O3. Remember, whenever they say find the mass of one mole of Fe2O3, uh, it basically means to find the MR of Fe2O3. That's basically what it means. You need to find the MR, mass of one mole. So if you look at your periodic table, you find Fe as atomic mass of 56. So I'm just going to times it by 2. That's because I see two of that. And I'm going to see the three oxygen there. So that's three times 16. That's the atomic mass of oxygen. And I'm going to add all this together, which gives me 160. So that's the answer there. Uh, 160. So that's the mass of one mole of Fe2O3. Now, this question says, okay, now you need to figure out how much is the mass of iron three oxide, which is formed. Now, if you notice carefully, I have the moles of the iron three oxide and I have the MR of iron three oxide. And the question is now asking us, how would you find the mass of iron three oxide? Now, to remember mass equals to moles into MR. So I have the moles with me and moles is 0 0.04 and I have the MR, which is 160. So when I just times it by two, and that's how I get 6.4 as my answer there. Now, the next question says you need to find the total moles of gas. Now, this is tricky. You need to understand they're saying total moles of gas, but they're not saying which gas, which means if you look at the equation here, you have two gases here. So they actually mean both the gases. 
So for you, how do you work this question out? Since you want to find the moles of gas, you need to work with somebody's moles, some info, whose moles you already know. If you look at your first question, you, you could actually find the moles of Fe SO4, 0 0.08, and you use that to find all other information. So I'm going to use Fe SO4. Um, in fact, I keep telling my students, use this as fish and bait. Fish is you know, somebody whose information you need to find. And to catch a fish, you need a bait. Bait is somebody whose information you know. Usually it's the limiting region. That's one way to put it across, just uh, my way of doing it. So this is my bait. This is whose information I know. I'm going to use FESF4 and catch all other fishes in the question. That's what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is, uh, since I need to find the moles of gases, I'm going to look at the equation there. I see there are two FESF4, that's my bait, and I have two gases there one plus one so the ratio that comes out uh, for this question number f uh, number five uh, would be i'm going to say this is feso4 uh, with respect to gas now as per the equation as per the equation i have two of these and since i have two of the gas now in case you're wondering why two that's one here and one here Okay, now I have the moles of FeSO4 as 0 0.08. So I already know the moles of my FeSO4 is 0 0.08. So it's clearly it's 2 ratio 2, which means the moles of gas should also be 0 0.08. So that's the answer there. Um, so we write here 0 0.08. So that's done. Now the question says you need to figure out the total volume of the gas form. Now don't forget that RTP, the, the formula that you have to use is N equals to V by 24. So which means uh, if you want to find the volume, you make volume the subject. So that's moles times 24. So that's 0 0.08 times 24. And that's how you get 1.92 as your answer. Okay, that's it. That's for this exam. And uh, I'm going to now start with 2010. Give you a couple of minutes to grab the second page. All right, let's have a look at the well, another examination question. This is uh, from May 2010 series, paper 32, question number 8. You'll find this on page number 12. So uh, let's have a look. There you go. This question talks about lead nitrate is being heated. And uh, you're getting lead oxide plus NO2 plus oxygen. Good to know NO2 is a brown colored gas. Um, impure lead to, lead to nitrate. So that's important for you to understand. That means it, this 5 grams is not pure lead nitrate. It must contain some impurities. Uh, which you, that, And that's why the question is asking you to find percentage of lead to nitrate. What's the actual sample of the lead to nitrate in this 5 grams? The, there is an information given about the volume of oxygen that's 16 dm uh, 0.16 dm cube that's the information given there so the first question again uh, let's try to number them that's one two uh, three and four four questions four marks each is one mark how would you find the moles of oxygen and that too the information is it's at rtp room temperature and pressure now the formula to be used if you remember n equals to v by 24 so I need to find the moles. I have volume 0 0.16 dm cube. It's already in dm cube. Notice if it's not in dm cube, you need to change the cm cube to dm cube by dividing it by 1000. So 0 0.16 divided by 24, and that gives me um, 6.67 into 10 raised to the power negative 3. The next question talks about how would you find the moles of lead nitrate. Once again, classic info question in which they have given you nothing about lead nitrate. Um, you can't use the information of impure to find the moles. Uh, but then yet the question for, wants you to find the moles of lead nitrate. So that's how again you do the fish bait thing. That's my fish, the unknown. So the bait whose information I know is the oxygen. So oxygen, I know oxygen information. That's because of this. So I'm going to connect oxygen to this. So that's basically my bait and that's basically the fish that I want to catch. That's how it works. So um, the ratio between lead nitrate and oxygen. So let's, let's look here. Um, so the ratio, this is second part. Lead nitrate. So I have lead nitrate here connected to oxygen. 
according to the equation two of that is giving me one of this but and i also have the actual moles of oxygen which is 6.67 into 10 raised power negative 3 so that becomes x just do a little bit of cross multiplication you should be able to work this answer out so x will be equal to 2 times 6.67 into 10 raised power negative 3 and that's um, 0 0.013 and that's basically how you get this answer so i'm going to put that 0 0.013 0 0.013 but don't forget you need to show the working as an evidence once again i'm repeating that without which uh, it's very very possible that you will not get the mark allotted for that question uh, this information mass of one mole of lead nitrate is 331 don't forget anytime they say mass of one mole of anything it means uh, they have given you mr but if they had not given you this mr you could have found this yourself from the periodic table the third question says you need to find the mass of lead 2 nitrate. Now, don't forget you already have the moles of lead 2 nitrate. So, you have the moles of lead 2 nitrate. You have the MR of lead 2 nitrate. Now, if you notice, it's the same kind of question what the examiners keep putting in. So, to find the mass of lead 2 nitrate, I need to use the formula mass equals to moles into MR. So I have the moles, which is 0 0.013. I have the MR, which is 331. And all I need is a little bit of calculation there. And um, it comes to be 4.41 gram. That's the answer there. That's the mass of lead to nitrate. And the last question, which talks about the percentage of lead to nitrate. Now, this is basically some kind of a percentage purity question, which is always mass of pure sample divided by mass of uh, impure sample times 100. So that's the working formula. So I have 4.41 as my pure sample. I have 5 gram. If you go back here and check, that's the mass 5 grams there of the impure um, sample and then times it by 100. And that's how I get 88.3%. Um, and that's basically how you solve this question. Well, for now, I have given you ex three examples of past paper question, how to do mole calculation questions in IGCSE chemistry. Hopefully that must have given you some working ideas for you. So why don't you pick up um, work from here, do a few more, and uh, hopefully within a few days, I should be able to give you another video of some more past paper questions in case uh, you need any more help. Your comments and suggestions are always very welcome and I always look forward to, for your comments and if there is anything special you want me to do, please let me know, message me and if you have liked the video, please do hit the like button and definitely don't forget to share this on your platforms. Thank you very much. See you again. Ciao.